Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. David's 37th Psalm opens with, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. This profound message God spoke through the lips of his shepherd king for his use in fulfilling his duty to provide for the spiritual and emotional welfare of his countrymen, but it has redounded through the centuries to the benefit of every believer. You see, there's something deeply embedded in the human psyche that insists if a person does good things, good things should happen to him, and if he does bad things, well, there should be a consequence of that too. David's primary message is how we should deal with our expectations when that, at least on the surface, and for the moment, it isn't true. Many scriptures teach us this world belongs to God, and he disposes of it as he will. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways and thoughts higher than ours. Trying to salve our disappointed feelings if we see evildoers prosper and good people suffer by applying our human rationalizations is, well, like trying to explain to a cow why she has to be shooed out of an alfalfa field so the farmer can bail it into hay for winter. Since we can't aspire to the plane of understanding from which God makes his executive decisions, we must content ourselves with learning to trust him and master our emotions, for fretfulness is an emotion, and we are here instructed to do it. Fret not thyself, he says, not that he will stop us from fretting, but how? The answer is to believe in God, righteous God, just God, holy God. The answer is in the next sentence of this verse, people who live wicked lives shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. So how long is soon? That's a question only God can answer, and that's why we must learn to believe that what the prophet wrote so long ago is indeed the great rule of human life, and wait on the Lord to work his purposes in his world. Only he died to redeem it, only he searches all hearts, and we owe it to him to let him deal with every soul in it as patiently and extensively as he sees fit. Try that, and you will find that once you make the decision to surrender feelings of disappointment and frustration into his hands by trusting what he is doing, suddenly you are not alone. There is a divine grace meant to flood our souls and take the sting from present circumstances. Brother, this world is not too big for God to handle. He has told us, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. The truth is, God has a hidden place in which he keeps and protects those who choose to take up the cross and live by the teachings of the Bible. In one very important sense, what happens in that hidden place has nothing to do with the storms and furors that lash and foam in the raging seas of human affairs all about it. Although God may make use of some parts of contemporary events to work his will and purpose in the lives of his people, those events are never the masters of our destiny. The ultimate goal of God's dealing with us is, first of all, to get us into heaven. But the intrinsic to that goal, and only barely secondary to it, is building character. For Christian character is the foundation of our spiritual personhood. Nothing he allows into our lives is there only for the purpose of hurting us. Though the waters on which our little boats are anchored rise and fall with the raging storms outside our sheltered haven, we can look past all the visible human causes of those tides and gaze directly into Jesus' face, accepting all that comes as from his hand before any other, and in him finding the grace to benefit with humble Christian equanimity in the lives he maps for us on our journey to heaven. You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at g-o-d-s-f-i-v-e minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.
Hi, I'm Sue Taylor, and I host the Faith to Live By podcast, available from the Sky High Podcast Network. Are you looking for a little spiritual pick-me-up as you begin your day? Each weekday morning, I have a short devotional thought to get you going and give you something to reflect on as you go about your day. Faith is not just something you need when you get saved. Faith is something you live by. Look up Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe today.